Hello everyone and welcome to this UDK Basics Tutorial Part 2. We're gonna start off with learning how to import in the content browser. To begin with, we're gonna import some music. However, not every music works for the file itself. You can't import MP3, nor CAF, nor anything except WAV files. If you have an MP3 file, and you need to convert it to WAV file, you can always go online and convert it yourself. To import, click on the import button. Then, find the WAV file that you're trying to look for. I'm gonna select jungle.wav. When you see the screen, this is where you select the package source. In this case, I'm gonna make a new package. I'm gonna call it jungly and then keep the name as itself. Grouping is optional. You don't have to do grouping for this one because it's only one file. Make sure that you always create an auto queue. Then click OK. This should give you two files, the sound queue and the sound nod wave. Next, we're going to learn how to use triggers. To make a trigger, all you have to do is right click, add actor, and add trigger. To make the trigger functional, you're going to need to learn about Kismet. To access Kismet, you're going to need to click the green K. This section here is just like any programming, but in UDK, you don't have programming unless you really want to go in the coding section. To start off, make sure that you have selected the trigger. Then, right click and make new event using trigger 1 and you can choose if it is used, destroyed, or touched, or anything else. In this case, we're gonna see on touch. Then, you can always go to new action, then you go to sound and then click play sound. To select the sound that you want, you have to go to the content browser, then you select, before we do that, actually make sure that you save, select both, right click and click save. Then it's going to ask you to make a new package. I'm going to call this the same thing, so I'm just going to hit on save. Find your music, then click on the sound cue and then click this button here so that it can import the sound cue. This way you have attached it to Kismet. Then all you have to do is click touched and attach it to play. By the way, if you want to move around freely, all you have to do is just keep a hold on the right click and then you can move. If you want to detach a string, all you have to do is hold Alt and then click and it will detach. In this case, we also want to do something else. Let's play an announcement. You can always attach it and then you can here type what you want to say. Uh, for this example, I'm going to put you are going to die now. Then, all we have to do is run the game. By the way, make sure that you are still on UT Deathmatch or UT Game. I'm using UT Game, although they are kind of the same. But make sure you just use UTK or UT Deathmatch. Then, you're gonna hit there. And when we, when we touch the trigger, it should play the sound and it should display the announcement. So, as we can see, it did work. Let's exit out, and actually, let's not use a trigger for the background music. So I'm going to detach this string, keep this one on, hold control, and then you can move it separately. Then I'm going to go to new event level loaded, which means that when the level starts, it should play this whatever is attached to here.
This function is similar to the start function in C sharp. So all you have to do is just attach it and then you are ready to go. So let's test it out. So as you can see, when the lo level loaded up, it started the music. Next off, we're going to talk about making the floor bigger because it's always an issue. This is a pretty simple solution. All you have to do is just select the floor, go to uniform scaling, and then just make it bigger or smaller. It's that easy. Next off, we're going to talk about how to make collisions on some bodies. As you can see, I can go through this tree. And in some games, we don't want that to happen. We want collisions on these objects. To do so, you have to find the object in the content browser. A shortcut would be to right click and then find the content browser. We can see here that it says no collision model. To fix that, double click on the object. As you can see here, we have collision. Now we don't want any complicated collision, so we're going to go to auto convex collision. Make sure that you have enough pieces around, otherwise it's going to look weird. Make sure the depth is a little bit on, depending on what object you're going to use. For this case, the collision could be a little messy here. Then all you have to do is exit out and test it out. So in this case, we can't go through it anymore. As you can see, it has collision even for the bullets. The next thing we have to do is destroy objects. And I'm not talking about the function of destroying itself automatically. I'm talking about the function where you shoot the wall and it gets destroyed. To do so, let's select a wall. For example, this wall. Do the same as finding it in the content browser. Then, you got to double click, go to Tools, Fracture Tool, and then you're going to see this. This is the number of chunks that's going to be produced when you shoot the wall. To make this higher, I probably go for 72 and then click generate. This gives us a decent amount of chunks. To support the chunk, hold control and make some stable chunks that will never get destroyed and stay all the time when you shoot the wall. As you can see, I'm trying to make a little bit. It can be so tricky a little bit, so just bear with me here. Okay, this seems about good enough. Then make sure that you support it and check it so that it can actually be functional. Then click slice. It's gonna ask you to save the wall as a new wall. So what I'm gonna call it here is Wally and this Troyable Wally. Then click OK. For this case, I don't want to make any grouping, so I'll just go ahead and do this. So there you go. You can now well, give it a second until it saves. Then close it out. Make sure that you save it. It's going to ask you the same thing, so all you have to do is just click Save. After doing that, make sure that you go back. That's a lot of stuff here go back and find it. Then make sure that you go and remove these simple collisions that are created. So we're gonna remove the simple box collision and the line collision. Then we have created this new element which is the new material where it becomes chunkable. So in this material it will have the material of the real wall but the second one is when, when it's chunkable. So we're gonna have to go and find new material Then find something similar to the wall, and this should be about good. Then we're going to just click on this to import it. And then you should be all set. So all we have to do is bring this back to Wally. Make sure I all selected. Save it again. And then bring it to the scene. 
The bigger it gets, the harder it becomes to destroy. So we're gonna make a bet decent. This size should be good. So let's test it out. So as you can see, it's a little bit hard to destroy. So we're gonna have to make it a little bit smaller. This should be better. Alright. So as you can see here. You can destroy the whole thing simply by just shooting at it. So this is the how to destroy any object. Now, if we want to make a rigid body, let's say we want to make let's find an object first a rigid body that uh, it actually becomes physically realistic just in real life so all the physics will be applied to it so let's say we find a static mesh okay um, let's see some kind of rock would be the best choice to go with um, this should be about fine okay so, if we select this, we can actually import it to the game in special properties. So you can actually import it as a K actor, a rigid body, a UT static mesh, static mesh, static mesh, or anything else from this list. Static mesh. Or anything else from this list so we're gonna go with rigid body for now then we gotta make it a little bigger and leave it in the air actually after doing so we're gonna actually double click it go to its properties and then search for mass or else may make the mass about uh, 0.5 that should be about good exit out save it Should might might take a while. All right, there we go. And then, as you can see, now it's floating. Once you shoot it, it should go down. And you can actually use it with this. So if you have a lighter object, you can always uh, just shoot it and use it using so. In the future uses, I'm gonna be showing you how to move objects by yourself, just by holding it and actually throwing it or something. All right, so that does it for the uh, rigid bodies. And that should be about all of it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for part 3. Peace.